Hey everybody out there, hope everyone's having a great day. This is uh, Willie, the Money Coach, coming to you from One Hampton Road in beautiful Ross A, New Brunswick, here at our offices at ARC Financial Group. And uh, today I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about uh, investments. So actually I'm going to give you a little rundown on how we approach uh, the investment side of things. Um, so most of our clients that are happy with their investments are following a three-step process, okay? The first step we're going to talk about today is really the most important step that we're going to talk about, and that is where to put your money. So the government provides us with a bunch of different buckets or containers to put our money into. And uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the RRSP container. This one most people are familiar with. So the RRSP bucket, the way this uh, bucket works is you put your money in and you get a tax deduction. Okay? You buy your investments or you buy your stuff. You earn a return on those investments, and you don't pay any tax on them. You buy something for a dollar, sell it for two, earn a profit, you don't pay any tax. When you take your money out, usually for retirement purposes, at that point, you're going to pay tax. Okay, so the great thing about this container is that, let's say for example, you're in a 40% tax bracket and you put $1,000 into your RSP container, right off the hop, that's $400 that normally you would have to send to Revenue Canada that you don't have to send to Revenue Canada for that tax deduction. So you've turned your $1,000 into $1,400. So that's the great thing about the RRSP container. Uh, the next container we're going to talk about is the open container. So the open container, you put your money in, there's no tax deduction, you buy your investments or you buy your stuff, and your investments can be the exact same investments that you would hold in your RRSP container. The buckets don't care what investments are in there, they're going to work exactly the same way. So this open container, you buy your stuff, you earn a return on your investments, and you're going to pay tax on that. Buy something for a dollar, sell it for two, earn a profit, you're going to pay tax on that. When you take your money out is when you're going to pay the tax. Okay? Any questions about that? No? Pretty simple. The next bucket we're going to talk about is a tax-free savings account. So this container, you put your money in. Again, there's no tax deduction. You buy your investments, you buy your stuff. Like I said before, your investments will be the exact same investments in any one of these containers. They're going to work exactly the same way. So you buy your investments, you buy your stuff. You earn a return on those that investment. You're not going to pay any tax. Buy something for a dollar, sell it for two. Earn a profit, you're not going to pay any tax. When you take your money out, you're not going to pay any tax. Okay, so if I have a client that comes to me with with a thousand dollars and said, "Listen, you know, we're planning on doing a um, anniversary trip to the Mediterranean next year for my wife, you know, where should I put that money?" When you're looking at this container, you really have to ask what it's for. So, you know, is that thousand dollars? It's not for retirement, so you don't want to get it in this bucket. It's for short-term savings. So the great thing about this bucket is they can put your money in. And you can take it out, and you're not going to pay any tax on that. So it's great for short-term savings, saving up for a house, saving up for you know that special Harley Davidson you've been dreaming of, things like that. So that's the tax-free savings account. The last bucket we're going to talk about is the registered education savings plan. Okay, so this container you put your money in. There's no tax deduction. You buy your investments, buy your stuff, can be the same investments in any one of these containers. 
you earn a return on your investments, you're not going to pay any tax. Buy something for a dollar, sell it for two, no tax. When you take your money out, you're taxed, but you're taxed in the hands of the students. So a lot of us know when you're a student you've got uh, big fat tax deductions and very little income. So most of the time the students are never going to pay any tax. Uh, my associate's been doing it for 35 years and, and I don't think he's ever seen any student pay any tax on the RESP. So the great thing about this container is that when you put your money in, the government is going to give you a 20% bump on the first $2,500 per year that you put into this container. So on $2,500 per year, the government's going to give you 500 bucks of free money. And that's the Canadian Education Savings Grant. So that's the great thing about this container here. So basically the most important thing is to figure out what your money's for and then making sure you're getting it put in that right container. Most important step we're going to talk about. Okay? Second step, my mother used to tell me, oh, my mother used to tell me not to put all my eggs in one basket. She was right. We're a big believer in this and uh, spreading out your risk. And the fancy word for it really is um, asset allocation. So this first step, getting your money in those right buckets, is where you're going to make your money. This second step is where we're going to make sure that our clients don't lose all your money. So this is really the defensive strategy. And it's basically setting up your portfolio to match your risk tolerance or your risk profile. So basically, we would uh, have some tools we would use to do this, so you could do a, a little survey and we would figure out how your portfolio is supposed to be broken up. That's a bad pie chart, but we're going to go with it. So let's say that, uh, you know, we did it, we figured out your risk tolerance or risk profile. You were supposed to be in 65% Canadian equity and 35% Canadian bonds. Okay, so the story I, or a little uh, analogy I like to use for this is, is for great sports teams, okay? Those great sports teams out there that, are, that have won championships, they have role players. And the role players understand the roles and that's why they're successful. So the, it's the exact same thing with your investment portfolio is you have to understand who the role players are and how they work, okay? So I like to uh, describe it sort of like a, a hockey team. So... We'll say your Canadian equity or stocks would be like your goal scores. Your bonds would be like your defensemen. And any cash or money market stuff would be like your goaltenders, okay? So let's, let's say, uh, for example, in 1999, when people were getting double-digit returns on their investments, 20 30%. I know people were saying to their advisors that time, you know, we're getting 20 or 30%. Why do we have any defensemen? We should have six goal scorers out there, no goalies, no defense. But what happens when you don't have any goalies or defense? You're going to get scored on big time at some point in time, okay? And then again in 2008, when the big dip hit, I know people were saying to their advisors at that time, whoa, whoa, whoa why do we have any goal scorers out there? We should have all goalies, all defensemen. But then you look at it, if you're, if you're in the second period and you're down 2 nothing and you've got all goalies and defense out there, no goal scores, how are you ever going to get back into the game? It's going to be pretty tough. So that's the second step, is setting up your defensive strategy uh, to match your, match your risk profile. So the third step we're going to talk about, and this step is really the least important step. It's uh, not unimportant, but it's least important. And the reason I say that is because if you've got this step set up right and you've got that money in the right buckets and you've got this step set up right you've got your defensively defensive strategy set up to match your risk tolerance it's tough to make a really big mistake here okay and this third step is picking investments okay so how we add value here is let's say that uh, we figured out that you should be in 65 percent Canadian equity mutual funds. Within that one category, Canadian equity, 
there could be over a thousand different mutual funds, different mutual fund managers in that one category. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of those professional money managers, fund managers, and we're going to rank them. Okay? We're going to rank them in one, two, three, four. So we're going to rank them in first quartile, second quartile, third, four, third quartile, fourth quartile. Okay, and we're going to do that for three months, six months, one year, five year, ten years, fifteen years, however long that fund manager has been around, we're going to rank them for that period of time, okay? And we want you, we want our clients with those fund managers that are performing in this top half of the class most of the time, okay? So we want our clients with those fund managers that are consistently performing in that top 25 or 50%. Uh, in their category amongst their peers. Okay, so in the short term, the difference between a first quartile fund manager and a fourth quartile fund manager could be quite large, basically because everybody can have a bad day every once in a while. But as you go out over the long term, let's say 10, 15, 20 years, okay, the difference between a first quartile fund manager and a fourth quartile fund manager is probably going to be somewhere between 3 and 4%. Okay, but that right there, three to four percent over the long haul is worth fighting for. Okay, make a huge difference in your uh, ability to really live your retirement dreams, basically. So that three four percent is worth fighting for, and that's what we do in this third step of picking the investments. Okay, so that's basically a quick rundown of how we approach the investment side of things. Um, I hope that was enjoyable for you. Uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to contact me. Um, yeah, if you have any questions or, or you want to uh, sit down and, and really uh, discuss how we might be able to help you get where you want to be, whether that's golfing six days a week in Sedona, Arizona for retirement, or whether that's sitting on the St. John River, looking down the river, sitting in your lounger, if that's where you want to be, Get a hold of me and we can sit down and discuss how uh, we can help you get there. All right? Take care and enjoy your day.